your light in me. Your light in us. Your light in this fellowship, in this assembly. Father God, that you created us to be beacon of light, living river. To show hope, to demonstrate the love of Christ. To show that life truly flows when you're in the current, and you're in the stream, when you're in the will of God, when you're seeking him, when you're seeking his face, that all that there is, all the provision is in the flow of the river. Everything that we would ever need is in you, and you are in us. And so, Father God, I just thank you. I thank you for being on the inside of me. I thank you that I don't have to feel like I'm calling long distance, but you're on the inside of me. You give me the breath of life. You sustain me. Hallelujah. I thank you that I don't have to worry about an expensive long distance bill, but I can just cry out to you, oh God. And you answer and you hear me, oh God. You let your presence be known when I seek you, oh God. When I come before you, oh God, it's never a time of waste because you come in 
Rosha Kabohudo, Kifrandu Rodo Boski Kere Mahanda, Kela Mahanda Lala Bohote, Kela Le Boho Sakara Mahanda Lala Bohote, Kifrandu Rodo Boska Kere Mahanda, Sakando Lolo Bohoto Rebehi, Nene Ne Mahu. Hallelujah.
be blue. When he set Israel free, he blew. When Jesus wanted his disciples to receive the Holy Spirit, he blew them. Ezekiel prophesied. Hallelujah! Let the wind of the Lord blow in my life. I got two 
Jesus. Oh. Matthew, where I say, all right. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Stop. Just stop. Just stop. <laughs> we ain't going to get through it. Y'all keep on doing that. Jesus came unto them and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you, and Lord, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Mark 16. Mark 16, verse 15 through 20. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to just a few people. Every creature. To just your neighbors. Every creature. Just to those in your country. Every and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow the super preachers on TV that got a million dollar budget. Damn. Oh, you mean that that mean y'all too? Amen. How many of y'all believe? Amen. Amen. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall what? And they shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. After reading that, what you got to complain about? <laughs> All right. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat where? Right. And they went forth. Who is that talking about? All the disciples. And they went forth, not just the apostles. And they, everybody in the church, went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Genesis 12. What Genesis 12 got to do with what we just read? This was the first place that he was talking about it. Genesis 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had spoken, had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. And I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to make your name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Why? And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee. Why is all that important? And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. I want to begin. We said last year we were going to dedicate the fourth Sunday toward a missions emphasis. So we're going to talk from the series, Give Us the Nations, on the fourth Sunday. And today we're going to speak on God's vision for missions. God's visions for missions. Let the church say amen. amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Let it come forth in clarity and power in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. you may be seated in his presence. That's the reason why he come here so strong today, because he's backing up what we're talking about. Amen. Evangelism and global missions emphasis. These next 12 months, I'm going to build each one. So by the time we get to the end of the year, we're going to have a powerful tool to not just use as a resource for our own lives, but other churches and other people as well. Amen. This crowd is not just the only ones we minister to. Amen. 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 You'd be amazed at who we interface with and who gleans from us on a regular basis. Listen, many have been taught a mindset that God wants to bless us. And that's true. But they don't realize 
He wants to change us. Amen. <laughs> Say amen. amen. Heard a testimony of this young man who actually leads a mission organization. I was pretty impressed with him. And he stated how when he first came to the Lord, he went, he was invited to a Bible study. And the leader of the Bible study took out this big, huge map and spread it all over his table. And he asked each person present to pick a nation to pray for. He ain't no better. He picked America. He said, why don't you try some place that's a little further out than that? So he picked Canada. <laughs> he said, listen, why don't you stretch and go on out further? So he got to looking around. And his eyes landed on Saudi Arabia. And he said, that's nice. He said, but while he's thinking this and he's picking Saudi Arabia, he's thinking to himself, this guy is talking about reaching people in another country and praying for them. He's like, what that got to do with God blessing me? Sound familiar? And the young man, as he selected Saudi Arabia, the leader challenged him to learn how many Muslims were in that country, how many mosques, how many Christians and how many churches, and he invited him to come back and share next week. Funny thing happened. He not only came back next week, but he kept researching and studying and studying and studying. And he ended up meeting someone and becoming friends with somebody from guess where? Coincidence? I don't think so. And he also ended up going on a mission trip to right over in that area. God was slowly changing his small purpose to God's global purpose. Let me say it another way. God was slowly changing his small purpose or his perspective that the world revolves around him to God's perspective, were that the world revolves around him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now the question, for many of us, after this message, we're going to come to a realization. And we're going to realize how small our purposes are and how big God's purposes are. But the question is, are you going to hold on to a self-centered perspective once you get done, or will you embrace his big purpose? The world is going to continue to offer you a multitude of distractions in order for us to miss out on the unchanging purpose of God. And if we do, we'll miss out on the whole purpose of life. We'll miss out on how to live and how to give. We will miss out upon how to become just like him. But you don't have to worry God has laid out his purpose in the beginning of the scriptures and starting in Genesis 12, where many believe, many scholars actually would say, this is when the story changes. This is when everything gets good in the Bible. This is when everything gets heated up and God pivots everything. Why? Let's look at the first uh, 11 chapters. God blesses his people. Say this with me. God blesses, God blesses his people, his people. To, reach to reach all people. As my uncle used to say, all peoples. <laughs> the Bible is not just a book. It's not just some words in a book. It is 66 books written, over, written by over 40 different writers over a period of 1,500 years. Many of them were in different uh, 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 time periods, they never met each other, but they consistently pointed in the same direction, had the same theme, and wrote the same thing. So what are the main events in the first 11 chapters of Genesis? In Genesis 1 through 3, we see the creation. We see the Garden of Eden. We see the fall. Man fails spiritually, genetically, and dimensionally. Amen. Listen, in Genesis Four through six, we see the Nephilim invasion. What do you mean the Nephilim invasion? The Bible says that the sons of God began to think that the daughters of men were fair. And they began to uh, marry them and interbred with them. The sons of God were those fallen angels. Now, 
when they begin to have babies with women, they produce the giants or what is called in Hebrew, the Nephilim. And the Bible says that they were men of renown. You look on some of this stuff that's on Disney, that's on our cartoons, that's in movies, and you wonder where they get this stuff from. Think about this. Hercules, son of Zeus. I wonder where they got that from. Now, there's a man in the Bible named Samson who was very strong. You all know about him. But the thing that I wonder about when I hear stories like that, first of all, you also got to understand that those Greek stories that they told about their gods actually were copycats of what they learned about in Africa. And the fallen gods, which came down and had offspring with their children, don't that sound familiar? I'll leave that alone. Then in Genesis 7 through 10, we see that God said, I've had enough of this. So he sends the flood and he preserves mankind because their family had been untainted and they were, they were, they were righteous and walking holy in his eyes. And God spares the family of Noah. So God says, okay, I'm going to take Noah and I'm going to start all over with him. So Genesis 1 through 3, we see creation, Eden in the fall. Genesis 4 through 6, we see the Nephilim invasion. Genesis 7 through 10, we have the flood and, and the nations begin afresh. And then in Genesis 11, or is this 12? Well, Genesis 11, what do we have? The Tower of Babel. Why is that important? Because all the nations began to gather together. And they decided they were going to come together for their purpose instead of God's. You can read that in there. And as they came together, God scattered them. And when he scattered them, he sent them out. And they went to every nation. They, they, they spread out across throughout the earth, speaking almost 70 different languages. How is he going to reach all of them now? Enter Genesis 12 where everything changes. God has a man named Abram. And he says, Abram, I want you to leave your father's house. And I'm going to send you into a land that I'm going to take you in. And I'm going to bless you. Why? Because in you, all the families of the earth shall be important. Why is this important? Because God has always wanted to reveal and manifest his glory to the nations of the world, to the nations of the world. Listen to the Exodus chapter nine, verse 16. But I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed throughout all the earth. Listen to Psalms 67, one through seven out of the New Living Translation. May God be merciful and bless us. May his face shine with favor upon us. May your ways be known throughout the earth. Your saving power among people everywhere. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. How glad the nations will be singing for glory because you govern them with justice and direct the actions of the whole world. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Then the earth will yield its harvest, and God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us, and people all over the world will fear him. We could say it again in this simple verse in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 through 3. And this is out of the uh, uh, English Standard Version. And I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you I will curse and in you say in me. In me. Say in me. in me. Say in me. Say in me. All the families of the earth will be blessed. Y'all didn't say it. 
Listen, God blessed Abraham to be a blessing to all the families of the earth. Why is this important to us? Because it continued down. It continued down from Abraham to his son Isaac. It continued down to his son Jacob. It continued down to the prophets. It continued down to Jacob, to uh, David. It continued to Elijah. It continued to Jesus, to his apostles, and now unto us. Do you see his plan has always been to for the nations of the world to come back to him? Is this making sense? But well, some will say, oh, Neil Yon. You know, Pastor Hillman, I appreciate your passion. I appreciate your enthusiasm. I think it's wonderful what you're trying to do, but it's just not me. It's just not you. It's the great commission or the great commandment, not the great suggestion. So look at your neighbor and say, hey neighbor, just in case you didn't know, want to make sure now, this is talking about you too. Everything God has blessed you with is not just for you, but ultimately for his purposes. Your abilities, your talents, your resources, your platform, your anointing, my God, is not for you. It's for others to bless other people. Y'all remember it happened a couple weeks ago, an NFL player that passed out on the field. Hamlin. What did they have to do? They had to revive him. What happened? The way he got hit, it not only stopped his heart, but there was no electrical current to keep the brother going. He literally, and I'm not trying to be facetious, got the life knocked out of him. And what happened? They had to revive him. They took out the machine and they boosted him. And that they had to deliver an electric charge to jumpstart his heart. You wonder why so many saints are so dead? There's no current or flow from their lives. When you give away, it comes back to you. Well, I'm almost done. But Pastor Hillman, I'm not called to everybody. God ain't sent you to everybody. I remember when I first heard people talk about missions, I started getting scared because I didn't want to go live in Thailand. Some of y'all laughing. Some people are called to do that. Some people are called to live in, in they're called to long-term missionary service and they got a grace for it. Mm -hmm. And they love it. They love it. And we got to be a, somebody say, well, if you had a hundred million dollars, what's one of the first things you would do? For the first thing I would do is bankroll and uh, uh, and support a whole generation of a new generation of missionaries, because some of these young people are sitting up here and they're wondering what their calling in life is. And we telling them to be a lawyer, we telling them to be a banker, we telling them to be this, this, that, and the other. How many of us have said, have you considered being a missionary? I know this is not for everybody, but some people may be called, some people may not. I, this is, this is Pastor Hill's personal belief, 
And this is my personal desire. It is my personal desire that every man, woman, boy, and girl in this church go on a mission trip at least once. Now, of course, a certain age requirements we want, but I would love to be able that once our young people get a certain age to take a whole group of, do you know what it would do? We, 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 we have a, imagine a group of teenagers and they go for a week to a foreign country and see how other people live without all the stuff they have. You think that might affect them? You think that might do something about their attitude? <laughs> Amen? Amen? Now watch this. You take these same young people and you turn them loose in the Holy Ghost. And now all of a sudden, they're coming back. They'll tear this church up. <laughs> Amen. Amen? Some of you, you need to, I want every person to go on at least one. We'll vacation out the country. <laughs> oh, pastor, you, 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 you going too far. <laughs> well, I can't be called to everyone. Listen, God said make disciples out of all nations. When we think nations, we think of literal, literal boundaries and political borders. But that's not what he's talking about. It's ethnos, people groups. I didn't realize this. Did you know in Nigeria, it's 40 different people groups? Did you know in India, it's over 2,700 people groups? Whew. There's 17,000 people groups in the world. But seven of them, 7,000 of them represent over 3 billion people who are unreached. Here's what the term unreached means. It means they've never heard the name of Jesus. There are no Bibles or resources that they have access to. There is no church within driving distance. Unreached. Unreached. But we can reach them. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to pick with y'all because I heard several of y'all say this, so don't look around if they pass the picking on me. No, I heard several of y'all say this. Well, I support, but I ain't going because that ain't me. You ain't even been yet. How you know you don't like it? Brother, have you ever had fufu? <laughs> Do you know what it is? No. So because you don't know what it is, and you've never had it, it's an African dish. Am I saying it right? Because you, huh? Because you've never had it. Because you don't know what it is. You cannot say, I don't like it. Am I right? Right. <laughs> and my African members say amen. amen. <laughs> when I was young and people would bring up Africa, let me just talk about Africa. When I was young and people would bring up Africa, I thought of Tarzan. <laughs> Y'all laughing, but that's all I saw. That's all I saw on the TV. And that's what I thought it was like. Till I got there. Tarzan was the last thing on my mind. I ain't seen no vines. I ain't seen no crocodiles. I ain't seen no lions. I saw a whole lot of goats. <laughs> I saw a whole lot of goats. People had goats in the back of their pickup truck. But let me tell you something. I was thinking we were going out into the bush 
Uh uh-uh. uh. We stayed in hotel rooms. Let me tell you something. We had lunch at this place called the Palms. Yeah, the Palms. Walked in. Paul took us up. Pastor Paul took us all to lunch. Walked in the door. I couldn't believe how incredible this place was. Went to the restroom. The faucets was gold. Marble everywhere. They had a water park in the back of the hotel. And behind that, they had the beach, the Atlantic Ocean. Beautiful. I couldn't believe it. Let me tell y'all something. We are aware that you're American. (laughs) We are aware how you live. We're not going to take you somewhere where it's just going to shock you and you you, 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 you will be coming back home rocking in the airplane seat. To my, I mean, no. Saints, open your minds. Open your hearts. Be willing to try because you want to know what happens. You may get over there and love it. Amen. You might get over there and like some might not want to come back. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We have to be willing to open our hearts. Listen, I'm going to say this and then I'll I'll close. Uh That's right, baby. What year was that we went to Africa? Um, Was it 09? Mm -hmm. Sure. That's right, because he watched the kids while I was gone. Seven. Oh, seven. Because we went at the end of the year. So, oh, seven, oh, eight. Here's what I remember. We gathered together as a church. We pulled our resources. And we sold toward making this mission happen. You know what happened when we came back? Because when you get involved in missions, you're getting involved in the thing that is first and foremost and of the utmost importance to God. What about local evangelism? We need people. Yeah, we need to be winning souls here, obviously. We're talking about the focus of world missions today. Amen. But let me tell you something. We went out of our way to make that happen. And God bless this church. Do you know we had a financial period where the increase, where the, where the, where the, where the, where the, the finance, the finances began to shoot up? We hit a point in our growth, we began to shoot up. Everything increased. And from what I remember, even people's lives, people start getting houses, new jobs, all kinds of stuff. You want to know where it stemmed off from? Missions. I remember. I remember. I remember. I told you all. You want to know you want to know how you can be blessed? Number 1, you need to know that you're already blessed. But number 2, find out what God is doing and participate with it. Yeah. Let the church say amen. amen. Stand to your feet. See this is why he got y'all all excited to begin with. Uh... <laughs> <laughs>